Time now for my royal scoop breakers, the spectator reporter Cara Kennedy and editor at large for the Mail on Sunday, Charlotte Griffiths. And the runaway royals, Harry and Meghan, were dealt a reputational blow over the weekend as their $20 million deal with Spotify came to an unexpected end. And Bill Simmons, head of podcast innovation at Spotify, doesn't sound like he'll miss them. I'm going to pose this question to you. You, you do a lot of business deals, a lot of negotiations. I do. Well, let, let's just. I pretend. wish I had been involved in the Megan and Harry leave Spotify negotiation. <laughs> the fucking grifters. That's the podcast we should have launched with them. We, um, I got to get drunk one night and tell the story of the Zoom I had with Harry to try to help him with the podcast idea. Do it. It's one of my best stories. Do it. Meanwhile, Megan's lack of commitment to the project has been laid bare after the author Alison Yarrow appeared on the Fail Archetypes podcast and exposed that she was in fact interviewed by a producer rather than the Princess of Privacy, with Megan's voice seemingly edited in at a later date. To track the rest of the history of this word, we called up journalist and author Alison Yarrow. Etymologists believe that the word kind of came out of this Greek insult and replaced it with a degrading kind of sexuality. Allison wrote a book called, again, my edit on the word here, 90s B-I-T-C-H, Media, Culture, and the Failed Promise of Gender Equality. Now, look, we've known for some time that men can be sparing with the truth, but with one archetype's interview exposed as a fraud, just how many more has she potentially misled us with? Uh, so, Cara Kennedy, Charlotte Griffiths, great to have you both here. And Cara, you've been investigating these discrepancies for months now. You're actually the first to report them. So what more can you tell us? Yeah, I was interested that this all of a sudden came up now as an issue because I remember reporting on this like, about seven months ago when Alice and Yarrow um, publicly thanked somebody called Farah, who turned out to be a, a, a producer for her interview. And then in the final episode on Spotify, we hear um, Farah's questions being swapped with Megan's. Um, but this is something that, that's come up a, a few times. Uh, there was another episode with Justin Trudeau's wife, Sophie, and um, a bit of talk on social media where different producers that were involved in the filming of that session thanked um, other people that weren't Meghan Markle for such an excellent interview. So it's definitely true that Meghan wasn't doing the legwork that she made out. And I think what happened basically was Meghan wanted the kind of glory of the big interviews like Mariah Carey and the kind of big name um, guests, but then the littler people were dealt with and interviewed by staffers. Charlotte Griffiths, is, is that your understanding as well as to what's gone on here? And if so, uh, that really doesn't help her reputation at the moment, does it, given you've got the head of Sp off podcast at Spotify calling her a grifter? Yeah, I mean, it's totally grifter behaviour. And I have re-gone over those um, podcasts today and read the small print. And when it comes to people like Alison, it says, along with... At, at Meghan Markle. So they've been quite clever. And, um, and yeah, I mean, obviously that's what she's done, Cara. You're totally right. She's, she's got rid of the small people and allocated them to one of her 29 people that worked on the podcast. Ludicrous. And just given herself the big job. But the thing is, is that she was getting one and a half million an episode. So, so what ha would happen was there'd be a big star and then there'd be two or three slightly smaller commentators, smaller stars, uh, lesser known authors. And though she didn't bother to do. But I think even if she had done them, we're talking like you know, 10 hours work on a podcast maximum for a million and a half quid. And there's only 13 episodes anyway. So if I were her, I would have done a bit more work. And, and she shouldn't be uh, surprised that people are calling her grifters, I'm afraid. I mean, it's unbelievably lazy. Let's just put it out there. I think it's intellectually dishonest. I do, because while you might be right, Charlotte, there's a bit of small print so that she can get away with it. Actually, she painted this podcast, Cara, as her interviews, as her conversations with fellow women, not just famous women. Yeah, and I also think what's interesting, and I think we kind of gloss over this fact, but three years is such an incredible 
incredibly long time think of all the different things that have happened and to do like charlotte just said 13 episodes in that amount of time is insane for, for a 20 million pound deal but what we also gloss over is when this deal was decided in 2020 Meghan and Harry had such a different stand in Spotify, probably thought that they had such an incredible deal. But all that's happened in three years is that Meghan and Harry have gone from a kind of beloved couple um, to just, they, they're now globally hated for being grifters and for being lazy and for kind of being moany. So Spotify made just the worst investment and probably thought that it was such a great deal at the time. Well, indeed. And Charlotte Griffiths, look, the whole thing is collapsing. I revealed here on the show last night my Hollywood sources telling me that Netflix are now looking to get out of their deal as soon as they can do so. So they've basically ruined the relationship with the biggest audio company in the world, the biggest streaming giant in the world, where actually if they wanted to do good, they could have taken their message out to the masses. I mean, this feels like... Just a total collapse. Yeah, and it's, it's honestly, it is through lack of hard work because, fine, they didn't do the whole charitable thing. You know, that's questionable. If they were going to go hell for leather and do the Netflix, Spotify thing, why didn't they do it? Why didn't they put loads of time and effort in? You know, the, the guy that called Harry a grifter sort of also implied in an anecdote we're yet to hear that Harry's ideas uh, for Spotify were pretty rubbish. So I just have this impression of him and uh, of doing a sort of back of the back of the fag packet kind of um, kind of ideas. And they really should have put more effort in and made these things work because you know we're all just going to call them grifters. They take these huge money deals and they're going to have to give some of that money back by the sounds of things. Because, well, indeed, you know, but... none of the Netflix stuff has worked. They're one trick ponies as well. The issue is, though, Cara, they're allergic to hard work. And actually, this is why so many folk in the royal family said you do not want to go to America, because they knew that they were work shy, that they were entitled, that they, they were difficult. I mean, no one used the term uh, grifter in the royal family, but they used lots of other similar terms to effectively mean arrogant and lazy. You know, these were words swapped all the time by the Sussex Survivors Club, you know, the former staff members who feel like they lived through hell when Harry and Meghan were in the royal family. Yeah, well, I think it was very clear from the beginning that Meghan and Harry wanted to make money. I remember that walkabout where Meghan said, I can't believe I'm not being paid for yes, this. Yes, and feed you. Kind of brand sponsorships and things like that. And obviously there's the talks about Dior now. But what Meghan and Harry have realised now is that the name will only get you so far. And if you're going to be signing a hundred million pound deals with Netflix, 20 million pound deals with Spotify, then you need to put some kind of effort into it. And they just haven't. No, indeed. Uh, fascinating stuff. Cara Kennedy and Charlotte Griffiths investigating the fakery in Meghan Markle's one podcast series for Spotify. Thank you both so much.